Smile to Genja. <laughs> The moon is 400 times closer to earth than the sun and the sun is 400 times larger than the moon. What does this mean? It means that when the moon comes in between the sun and the earth, they both seem the same size to us such that we form a perfect eclipse. Now you might be thinking, yeah that's standard stuff mate. It's not standard stuff because in our solar system there are approximately 166 moons and that never happens to any other planet because either the moon seems too big or the sun seems too big. But why is it that only on earth it's so specific? It's as if Allah is trying to tell us something. As we know when the universe was created we had hydrogen and helium but we need carbon for life to exist. Hydrogen and helium is all well and good but to form carbon you need three heliums to come together to form carbon. So there's this scientist called Sir Fred Hoyle, he wanted to see how these three heliums come together. So of course in the lab they do what they gotta do but he noticed that nothing really was happening. So then it occurred to him that maybe these three heliums will come together at a specific resonance. In other words there has to be a specific nuclear ground state energy. So he tried that and it worked and he noticed that if it was different for even 1% the heliums would not come together to form carbon. After discovering this Hoyer later confessed that nothing has shaken his atheism more than this discovery. As we know the sun and the earth is at a reasonable distance. Yeah if it was too close we'd all burn, if it was too further away we'd all freeze. If this relationship between earth and the sun changed for even 2% there'd be no life on this planet guys. That's how much is finely tuned. As we know everything is made from atoms but there's two forces that are holding atoms together. You've got the electromagnetic force which holds the structure of the atom and then you've got the nuclear strong force which holds the nucleus of the atom. These two have to be at a specific ratio for life to exist. Now what's this ratio? Let me tell you it's 1 over 10 to the power 16. 10 to the power 16 is 10 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 16 times. Now that is very very specific. Now if this fine tuning wasn't there there'd be no stars. If there's no stars there'd be no planets, if there's no planets there would be no life. At the dawn of the Big Bang there was something called dark energy which is pushing our universe out there. Now this is so finely tuned that if this force was too much the universe would have exploded and nothing would have formed. If it was too less it would have collapsed upon itself and again nothing would have formed. Now how much is this force? Well let me tell you mate it's 1 over 10 to the power 120. That is very very specific. Astrophysicist Hugh Ross says that the chance of our planet existing in the universe it's so rare. How rare though? Well he calculated it was 1 over 10 to the power 30. That's the chance that a planet like ours could form in the universe. So the fine tuning argument guys it's such a solid proof for the existence of a designer that atheists go to great lengths to disprove these minute minute probabilities. In fact the best thing they've come up with is the multiverse theory which what they've said is there's an infinite amount of universes out there so the chance of a universe 
or a solar system or a planet like ours forming is actually probable. But guys, there's no proof for the multiverse theory. It's just a hypothesis at this moment in time. And it's just another creative way to delay the existence of God because it's inevitable. Yeah, if you are a reasonable person, it's inevitable for you to start questioning that there has to be a creator.